सेव किया था ना मैं सिर्फ इसलिए गया था क्योंकि उसने मुझे कॉल किया दैट्स इट बट लिसन तो सेव इट फॉर समवन एल्स जिंदगी में सेव करना जरूरी है मगर जब बात पैसों की हो सिर्फ सेविंग से काम नहीं चलेगा इक्विटी म्यूचुअल फंड्स में इन्वेस्ट कीजिए और अपने सेविंग्स को आगे बढ़ने का मौका दीजिए म्यूचुअल फंड इन्वेस्टमेंट्स आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क रीड ऑल स्कीम रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट्स केयरफुली It's almost two years since the war started in Ukraine, or since Putin invaded Ukraine. Now, among the things that the Western world did in response, besides, of course, arming Ukraine and also giving it economic aid as well, and intelligence and electronic information, etc. Besides all that, what the Western world or Ukraine's allies or Russia's adversaries, very powerful, led by America, including all of NATO. European Union all of them got together to impose crippling sanctions on Russia making it very difficult almost impossible at least in theory making it almost impossible for Russia to import many critical things many critical things of dual use purposes things which could be used for civilian use as well as military use definitely anything of military use definitely anything high tech semiconductors etc transportation cars all kinds of things however as happens with all restrictions all restrictions are busted now you want to know how it works see any time see any time government of india puts restrictions on import of gold or puts duties on import of gold that's when smuggling of gold goes up so anything anything that is banned from being traded that leads to a parallel market or smuggling in fact to, to tell you a little bit of a story when dr manmohan singh after the post 1991 reform phase during the post 1991 reform phase have any made it easier to import gold so that people will no longer have to smuggle it in any case not smuggle on that scale because when you smuggle a commodity like that it also means you have to send money out so and money goes out with hawala so hawala transactions that is illicit flow of money or flow of illicit money hawala transactions are to only cash will go you give cash to somebody here who then gives dollars or dirham to somebody overseas all of that gets linked up so as gold smuggling came down that also came down that was around time that my colleague then sheila bhat he organized for me to have a phone conversation with dawood ibrahim he was in dubai at that time before the bombay blast so i spoke with him and i said what do you think what uh, what do you say about this that that dr manmohan singh now with his reform has made it possible for indians to import gold so he said i really appreciate this this is a reform this should should have been done a long time back i said but your business will suffer he said it doesn't matter if i if my business suffers because after all you know what i am a patriot i am a patriot aaj subah bhi india new zealand ka match hua tha world cup mein main to india ko support kar raha tha right so i can put a put a date on that on that conversation as well now why do i tell you this story i tell you this story to make the point <coughs> that when you put restrictions on a trade or restrictions on the movement and some on something that one side really needs for its use and the other side really wants to sell it takes two to clap right when that happens then it's impossible to stop the flow of those goods that's precisely what's happening between western europe and russia now how is it happening now there are a couple of articles i'll share with you i will not go into detail of those articles there is one from the new york times it's a recent article in fact last couple of days that talks about that talks about how the chinese are now using sort of ports of convenience in the middle so something is something is imported say in morocco morocco turkey these are countries which have not taken a partisan position on russia or which remain relatively neutral india is also among those but i don't see any of the indian ports for transshipment mentioned anywhere here so it is in these countries and in china that through many dodgy e-commerce companies russians are able to import many useful things including in many cases semiconductor chips these are then transshipped to russia so that is one that is one element so i will share with you this new york times story also in may 14 wall street journal story these stories talk about some detail 
However, let's look at some let's look at some cases where data is more easily available, data is more easily verifiable, and where we can name the countries from where these goods are going. We can also name the goods that are going. What it also does is it shows up the hypocrisy, particularly of the European countries, Western European countries, that they want sanctions on Russia, they want all of the world to follow the sanctions on Russia. They don't want the rest of the world to buy oil from Russia. Never mind that they they would like to. They would love to keep buying gas from Russia. At the same time, they are exporting enormous amounts of their own high value goods to Russia. And how is that happening? That's where we have the data. And data comes from a story that my colleague Nikhil Rampal, he no longer works for us in India. He's studying now in Italy, but he also does some data crunching for us and writes for us from there. So I will share a link of his story also with you. You will see the front page of his story on your screens also. So that story tells us that what has happened is that while everybody is talking sanctions, exports from Western European countries to Central Asian countries, which are the Central Asian countries. These are Central Asian countries are Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, Kazakhstan, right? So these five big Central Asian countries or the Stans as these are called, their imports of Western European goods have gone up phenomenally. I will give you some examples. I will also share some charts with you. So first of all, let me give you some basic data. I know it, it also looks shocking because the base is too low. Now if somebody is importing only one pen, pen and tomorrow they import 31,000 pens, right? So you might say, oh, it's gone up by so many thousand, one to 31,000, but it's only 31,000 pens. So you can apply that logic also. So I will give you the relative picture as well. The, at the same time, the export of cars, for example, export of cars, at least to one Central Asian country from Germany has gone up 31,000 percent. What is the period where we are making a com making this comparison? We are making this comparison between, say, the first nine months of 2021. That was a normal year. There was no fighting going on with the two th with the first nine months of 2023. So, 31,000 percent in one case export of German cars to one country. I will tell you which country in detail as we go along. Also, similarly, exports of cars, ships, ships. Toys. Now, ships is very important. Ships and boats are very important because all these Central Asian countries are landlocked countries. So they have large lakes, in some cases, lakes in which big ships also are used. But at the same time, they've suddenly begun to import a lot more boats, a lot more ships, a lot more engines, and a lot more of the stuff that goes inside these boats and ships. Because remember, everything these days, almost everything with which has some machinery in it, has a has a chip. So imports, for example, in these countries, cent Central Asian countries of home appliances have also boomed. Once again, the belief is that it's not as if all these home appliances are being consumed in Central Asian countries, or these are also exported or re-exported to Russia to be consumed there. Maybe, likely, these are only being re-exported to Russia so that microchips, silicon chips can be taken out of these and used elsewhere. So in many cases now, Ukrainian forces and the NATO, NATO experts are reporting that the weapons captured from Russian soldiers are showing Western chips. So these are chips which have not been exported formally from the Western side to the Russians. This route and also, also through the routes that we mentioned to you earlier, through Morocco, through Turkey, and most of all, through China. So that all that is going on. In fact, even from the drones down by the Ukrainians, because, because drones are now used in swarms by Russians, and most of those are shot down, or a large number of those are shot down. From the wreckage of those drones, also chips manufactured by the Western companies are being discovered now, which means there is a good market on, a good market system on, whereby those chips are sold to third parties in other countries. And from there, these are transshipped to Russia. So German cars, I told you German cars have gone up, export has gone up 31,000% to one country. And what is the country? That is Kyrgyzstan. Again, export of German cars has gone up to Kazakhstan by 
1300%. Once again, the base is low, the base is low, but at the same time, it's a, it's a lot of increase. It, it is not explained by anything else, but the possibility or the likelihood that this is being re-exported. Other West European countries have seen increase in their exports to Central Asian countries or the five stands by a thousand percent to two thousand percent. And again, these goods also include toys, ships, boats, appliances, industrial steel. Very important. Where do we get this data from? We've got all this data from Eurostat, which is European Union's stat statistical office. And the data is from Jan, September 2021. And now we are comparing Jan, September 2023. Now, once again, you might say, oh, it's possible that the Central Asian republics are booming and they are consuming so much more. The fact, however, is not that. The fact is that most of these countries, with the exception of two, most of these countries actually have seen a decline in economic growth. Even the two where it might have gone up, it's only gone up very marginally by, by, by two points to the, to the decimal, two points to the right of the decimal. That's all very marginal. The other three countries, the economies, economic growth has actually declined. So that would not justify this exaggerated purchase. That is where I bring to you our chart one. If you look at the chart one on your screens, this gives you, this gives you straightforward percentage figures. So this is a percentage of increase of each European, European Union country, EU country. EU is a group of 27 countries, as you know. Each country's exports to each one of these five Central Asian countries. You see on the top, Estonia to Kyrgyzstan has gone up 30,853%, so like 31,000%. Again, the base was low, but base might have been low. Why has this boom taken place? Why is Kyrgyzstan suddenly importing so much from Estonia to Kazakhstan, it's gone up by nearly 800%, to Tajikistan upwards of 300%, Turkmenistan 459%, Uzbekistan 377%. And as you go down this list, you will see the same trend play out everywhere. So once again, this trend is established that all of this stuff is going to Central Asia. Again, the presumption is that it, it is then being re-exported to Russia. So between Central Asia and Russia, this is how the sanctions regime is being broken, which means you don't want to sell it to me, it's fine, but you can sell it to so-and-so from where I can go and buy or fr from where it can come to me. You don't care because you, you don't care because your hands are clear and you, you can say that I sold all these cars only to Kyrgyzstan where they go from Kyrgyzstan, how do I know? So it gives you plausible deniability. At the same time, I'm able to bust your sanctions. So both sides are happy. At the same time, the pretense of sanctions can also be sustained. Now, don't think that the first chart I've given you, this, this also looks at very marginal trading figures. Oh, somebody was only trading to the tune of 100, 100 euros, now it's become 10,000 euros. So you can say, so you are saying it's gone up by this much. This data only pertains to countries and trades where the minimum size of trade is a hundred million euros, right? A hundred million euros is not a small amount of money. So a hundred million euros. Since we talked about German cars in Kyrgyzstan, let me go into that particular factor. Now, of the 531 million euros worth of exports to Kyrgyzstan by Germany, 228 million euros, that's 43% is only cars, cars and vehicles. In the corresponding period in 2021, that is Jan, Jan to September 2021, nine months, it was only 0.72 million euros. So 0.72 million euros to 228 million euros. That is what comes to 31,000%. There will be some other staggering percentage points as we go along. Again, you look at Germany exports and cars. Germany's total exports to Kazakhstan in this period, 2.37 billion euros, of which 227 million euros, or which is about 10% is cars and motor vehicles. That's an increase of 1300%. Because in Jan, September 21, it was only 15.6 million euros. So from 15.6 million euros, this goes to 227. In the other case, it had gone up from just 0.72 million euros to 228 million euros. That was 31,500%. 
which brings us to a chart number two. You will see a lot of cars, a lot of cars on the on this chart. In fact, if you see it, see it closely, you will see just a few cars on one side. In fact, just four cars on one side, and then and then a lot of cars on the other. So, in fact, if you count these, you will find that the cars on the right side of this graph are twenty times more than the cars on the left side. What is the difference? Cars on the left side pertain to the period of the same period of nine months in 2021. That's the number of cars. For comparisons, exported say if in those nine months in 2021, EU countries exported four cars to to Central Asian countries. Now they've exported upwards of 80 cars, which means car exports to Central Asian countries have gone up by 20 times. And these are exports from EU nations. Once again. It's not as if Central Asian Republic's economy has boomed so much that people have so much more money coming out, falling out of their pockets that they are all buying cars right now. You can imagine where these cars are going. Of course, Central Asian countries are denying that they are doing any re-exports. The Russians, why would, why, why would they advertise the fact that they are buying these cars from there? It gives everybody a pretense and a fig leaf. The Americans and the others, they protest sometimes. Sometimes European Union has talked about putting sanctions on Central Asian countries, but they do no such thing because they know that they also need, they also need to continue to try and drive a wedge between Central Asian countries and Russia as well, because there is insecurity, there is strategic insecurity among Central Asian countries, particularly after what Russia has done to Ukraine, which follows what Russia had done in the past to Georgia. All Central Asian countries worry that something like this could happen to them also as Putin's ambitions grow and as the Russian irredentism also grows. So they have the same worries and it suits the Western European side and the American side to work on those insecurities and to not put under the Central Asian Republic under too much pressure on this issue, although they know exactly what's going on. Another important category of goods or interesting category of goods is floating structures, that is boats and ships. I told you that all these Central Asian republics are landlocked, but they have some large lakes. So you can imagine they'll be using some boats, some ships of some size. However, see what the base was and see where they've gone. So Kazakhstan, maybe they need a lot of boats, but in 2021, in the same nine month period, they'd only imported floating structures worth 0.4 million euros, 0.4 million euros, right? That is 4 lakh euros. 2023, in the same period of nine months in 2023, they've imported floating structures to the tune of 8.23 million euros. That's a growth again of 2000%. Again, the base is low. The, that's why the percentage is very high, strikingly high. But the fact also is that until two years back, they hardly needed to buy anything in this category. So why are they buying so much more now? Unless it is meant to go somewhere else. Kyrgyzstan in 2021, nine months imported. How much of these floating structures, boats and ships? Zero. Nothing at all. How much have they imported this year in nine months? 8.8 .8 million. Once again, you can make your own guess as to where it's headed. Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan has seen a thousand percent increase in iron and steel imports from 3.6 million euros to 43.4 million euros. Has Kazakhstan suddenly started consuming so much more steel? You figure it out. You might believe it also. So I leave that, I leave that choice on you. EU to Kyrgyzstan. If you see the entire EU to Kyrgyzstan, the export of sporting goods has gone up from just 85,000 85, euros in 2021 to 21.4 million euros. That once again, percentage is astronomical. It's 25,076%. The base is low. But again, the question is, if Kyrgyzstan was buying so few of sporting goods and toys, etc. in 2021, why are they buying so much now? Can they really consume 21.4 million euros worth of something of which they were buying only 85,000 euros worth just two years back? Uzbekistan, Uzbekistan again, aircraft, aircraft parts, spacecraft parts, very important. All of that has gone up by 1000%. Again, the base in 2001 was 14.5 million. 
Now in 2023, it's gone up to 161.4 million, which brings us to chart number three. So look at chart number three. What this tells you is, this tells you EU's exports to five Central Asian countries have more than doubled post Russia sanctions. And this chart tells you the growth in exports by countries. So Estonia is the champion. It's upwards of 800%. But everybody, everybody has taken advantage of this situation. Now, what happens in this case? Where is this headed and what is being done? So I have a quote from the U.S. Treasury Department. The U.S. Treasury Department says that the use of third party intermediaries and transshipment points outside of Russia is one of the most common tactics Russian entities have used to continue imports of foreign electronics and technology. Right. And look at the look at the look at the categories which are banned, where the ban is sanctions are really firm. Quant quantum computing, advanced semiconductors, sensitive machinery, transportation machinery, chemicals and things like that. Again, if you want to see the rounded figures, larger figures, overall EU exports to Central Asia have gone up by 120 percent. And if you look at exports to Russia, similarly, they've more than halved. Exports to Russia have halved. Exports to Central Asia have gone up by more than 120%. You can add two and two together. Usually when you do that, you arrive at the number of four. I share with you also this tweet by Robin Brooks, who is chief economist at the International Institute of Finance, which is the global association of finance industry. He says in this tweet, and you will see the tweet on your screens, trade patterns across Central Asia have gone nuts since Russia invaded Ukraine, unprecedented levels across the board. This is Western goods get, getting shuffled around before they go to Russia. Now, having brought you this far, I will also tell you a story in conclusion. Many years ago, more than three decades ago, it had to, it had to be before 1991 because that is when South Africa was under sanctions for many countries in the world, particularly India, because India had imposed very strong sanctions on South Africa because of its apartheid policy. That's when I was assigned at India Today to go and investigate a story on illicit Indian exports to South Africa, busting sanctions. So I did go to Bombay, spend some time and we did a story of which I will share a copy with you, a link with you. You can see that story. And we found that these exports were taking place through Maputo. Maputo is in Mozambique. So all these goods were shipped to Maputo. The destination was maintained as Maputo D. D stood for Durban. So you were sending all of this to Maputo, which is the capital of Mozambique, a country neighboring South Africa. And from there, these goods were taken to South Africa. You will be interested to know what these goods were. These goods were nothing precious. These are not cars. These are not things of any value. South Africa also has a sizable Indian origin community. A large majority of them are Hindus. Many are Muslims, but a large majority are Hindus. So Hindu community there needed their idols, needed their icons, needed the puja samagri, needed some of their foodstuffs, the kind of the kind of provisions that go into Indian food, some curry powder, some masala spices, but also more importantly, they needed stuff for the temple. So they needed dholaks and tablas and harmoniums and sitars and stuff like that. So, so all of them was being exported to Mozambique, to Maputo in containers marked Maputo D. And that is what the government cracked down on because they said that this was defying the sanction. Once again, I will repeat what I said in the very beginning, that no matter what restrictions you put, if there are things that some people really want, and if there are things that some people are really happy to sell, you will not be able to stop their trade. It could be it could be, it could be just dholaks and tablas and sitars and masalas in the case of Indian origin, particularly Hindus of Indian origin living in South Africa, which was then under apartheid linked sanctions. Or it could be Russians wanting high tech equipment or silicon chips, high tech semiconductors or even fancy European cars now.